Power by Ecotec. Hello guys, Victor here with Worldwide Corals. As you guys know, we're here in Southern California. We're attending RAP this weekend. Behind me, we're in San Diego. We're enjoying the beautiful view. You guys wonder, what are we doing in San Diego? Well, we're going to see uh, one of our customers. His name is Eric, so follow me along for the right. to Eric's house. He's got a beautiful aquarium we're about to show you. We're here with David from Lion Aquariums in Designs. He's the one who put the fish tank together. He designed it, installed it, he's maintaining it. Can you tell us a little bit about the aquarium, David? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've got a 225 gallon living reef tank. Um, so it's a Euro braced glass tank. Um, started out as a quarantine system actually because we were building Eric. Uh, we were designing Eric a, uh, a 270 gallon tank for his office. It's Ended up being pretty, pretty close in size and he wasn't quite ready for, for the office build just yet. It's supposed to be a quarantine system, but pretty much has morphed into the primary tank now. And um, it's been going for about 18 months. And uh, about two months into it, uh, this conspicuous angel started eating a bunch of uh, acanthrophilia brains over the weekend. So we, Angels. Eric actually came up with the idea to add on the side tank that we plumbed in to what uh, was a filtration system supposed to be just for this primary tank, but we were able to just add on another return pump, plumb it into the, to the uh, sump here. And so now we've increased the total system volume to about 270 gallons. We've got real reef rock in it, um, fully automated, it's got apex system. Uh, See, we got dosing, reactors. Uh, we did a little custom ATO down here to make sure we could fit everything underneath the footprint of the tank. Dimensions on the tank are six feet by two feet front to back, 30 inches tall. Nice. We have a hybrid uh, LED T5 lighting system. We've got Radeon G4 Pros. We also added some Kessel spotlights to just increase the par way up top. And then we've got a um, similar light fixture going on on the on this, we call it the side tank, um, where we have a one G5 actually, a pro, and then a, the hybrid uh, fixture as well. Nice. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the maintenance that you do on the tank? What are those? How often you do water changes? Yep. What so do you feed? We're here two times a week. Um, we handle all the algae removal during that. Um, we change water 50 gallons a week on average, and we dose um, most of the Red Sea line, Foundation, ABC. We use no pox to control the, uh, the nitrates and the phosphates as well as GFO. Um, the feeding here is really heavy with all of the fish, and so it takes a pretty aggressive regimen of, of water changes weekly, cleaning this protein skimmer two times a week, changing out the filter socks, two times a week. We also have a refugium, and that uh, we have to prune out the kaido about once every month. Um, we light that with the Apex Grow Light. We had a different light on there before, it was a Finex, and it did pretty well, but um, we've got a theme going here with blue and white, so we had to kind of conceal anything that's not blue and white, we've, we've, we've concealed with plastic, gotcha. and so we actually have a Apex Grow Light underneath there and uh, we've got all the Apex stuff hidden away where you can't see it, so the orange isn't conflicting with our, our blue and white I see. theme here. Wow, it looks gorgeous, man, I really love it. And we feed, um, we, we feed all the corals two times a week. We target feed every single coral, and we use um, refroids to do that as well. Wow. And then we feed just frozen food to the fish. Eric feeds them a couple times a day at a minimum. He feeds Nori a couple times a day, and um, they pretty much get nori and frozen food almost all the time. Cool, and David, you were telling me earlier that there's some changes you guys want to do to the tank? Yeah, um, so A, I think we're pretty close to outgrowing this tank uh, in, in terms of just the number of fish that we have in here and the number of corals. So uh, we're looking at going somewhere around 1,000 gallons in this wall for the next iteration of the tank. Um, other than that, we're just trying to shift over to more of an SPS dominant tank. That was the goal, even as a quarantine tank, we were gonna strive with SPS in the beginning. And then uh, Eric came across some really beautiful LPS corals. And so 
we kind of went down that road for quite a bit and where we had a lot of LPS um, and trying to just not over light them. Um, but more recently, you know, uh, Eric's really kind of made it clear that he would like to see some really beautiful, uh, nicer, colorful SPS up top. So we've been shifting the par a little bit to a little brighter, um, bringing in a little bit more of a, a white and a, and a yellow tone at midday to try to you know get the par up so we can get some really good SPS growth. Nice. So David, I can't help it but to look at the filtration and all the installation, how beautiful it looks and how clean it is. How yeah. long have you been doing this for? <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this uh, 21 years. Um, uh, I absolutely geek out on not only the fish, but uh, the equipment, if you can't tell. So it um, took a lot of pride to, to make this look as nice as possible. Um, it was meticulous, to say the least. Yeah, so Eric came to us with a, a kind of a want to make it look like a lab as much as possible. And so, I mean, from sourcing, you know, everything trying to make it blue and white themed. We started yeah. with the sump. It's, it's actually a non-custom sump. Um, I don't think you can get any more, but it's Marine Depot base uh, okay. sump. Trigger System makes gotcha. it. And that kind of had some white and blue in it. And so we kind of ran with that and was like, okay, let's just try to keep everything white and blue to where we went and got all Spears ball valves, uh, you know, the single-sided utility ball valve, they're white and blue. Um, blue dosing line for all of our dosing. Um, just uh, blue PVC from Bulk Reef Supply uh, just to keep everything and everything you know consistent with that theme white media reactors white dosing container reactor yeah way over on time um, <laughs> that Eric actually paid for <coughs> for us to design and install this way but we don't want to disappoint him it looks fantastic great job man so I see a lot of rare fish in there can we get to talk to Eric about his fish a little bit because it oh, seems yeah. like he's real into it I heard yeah Eric is definitely a, a rare fish collector he's got some I think maybe the rarest collection of fish in the world in, in only a 270 gallon system. Yeah, especially so, for the size of the tank, is incredible. Yes. Yeah, he's collected some amazing pieces uh, from so many different vendors. So he went quickly from not knowing, I think, much about what to get fish. Now he knows, he knows every single person to contact. If he's looking for a rare fish, he'll find it. Okay, guys, we got Eric here. He's the owner of the tank. He's gonna tell us a little bit about the fish. Eric, you've been telling me some crazy stories and you're really into your fish. Can you tell us a little bit, little bit about it? Yeah, so I've always been fish obsessed. This is pretty evident with this tank here um, and slowly growing into coral as we go. Uh, like ever since I can remember, I've always loved fish. And you know, when my family went to Hawaii, I'd like bring all my nets, I'd have bags and everything and I'd go out and collect them myself over the course of the week. I'd set them up in the hotel room in a five-gallon bucket. Um, Are you serious? Yeah. I'd oh my gosh, you're a, hardcore. I had like a little igloo thermos that I'd sit in economy class in between my legs. Right. Pre-9-11, this is like 35 years ago. Okay. And just blow into an air stone and it's line. And, you know, most of the time they in made the plane. it in the plane. <laughs> there was actually one time I was in Honolulu's airport where a lady thought I had a bomb. but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they came and they saw it was just a couple. You got to be kidding. Oh, because you were blowing through all Yeah, and it was like, you know, all set up. And in the airport, I had a plug so I could run the battery pack. But anyway. Oh, um, my gosh. That's a fun story, man. Yeah. But that's sort of what, you know, caused this. I uh, fell in love with things like the conspicuous angel. He's gorgeous. Your fish are flawless. Thank you. Yeah, we, we feed them a lot here. And then... You know, my, my other favorite actually is the redhead salon fairy wrasse. I think that's one of the coolest fish in the trade. Where's he at? Down in the lower left right there. It's oh, I thought it was a Solarensis at one point. Yeah, um, but I'm a real big fan of wrasses. I have pretty much everyone from the Earls to the Choate. Um, and you uh, got a flame wrasse that you can no longer get them. Yeah. Gorgeous, super I got, healthy. I got that before they, they stopped all the collection in Hawaii. Gorgeous. And then there's the Hawaiian mass right there. He's looking very plump. When we first Those got are hard him, to get a hold of. he was like about this big and we were really, really nervous because I had a gym ting at the time that was going after him. And, oh no. But uh, yeah, and then my new koi tang is doing really well. He's the friendliest tang I've ever had in the tank. What do you name him? Splat. 
splat. Because <laughs> of the, the black. It's you like know, somebody just splat him with something, right? Running a yellow tank. So. so, you set up this tank 18 months ago. What got you to get into the hobby besides back then collecting fish? What pushed you over the edge? I don't know. I, I wanted to actually get something going that was similar to some of the tanks I was seeing like on TV after I had an operation. I had a hip replacement. I was okay. like, you know, sitting there in bed and I started watching fish videos of, you know, all these interviews around special tanks and I, I started thinking about it and thinking about it and, you know, it became an obsession again. And uh, uh, David and I started talking about it two years ago and we wanted to do a build, built in one into uh, my office and it, the plans were taking a long time, and so this, as he may have mentioned, was a quarantine tank system yes. because I couldn't wait any longer, which now has turned into my main display. And uh, this will be the stepping stone. We're going to put in a bigger one right behind you, I think, in a couple months. Do you have any specific dimensions that you want to work with? I think, you know, the one thing I really, really like about uh, the really special tanks is width. And with. that's something you guys have at your facility. Yes. I think, you know, we're all used to fish, you know, swimming around and not, not having right. like the whole spectrum of direction. I think it'd yeah. be really neat to have a peninsula this time where they can go just as far this way. They as, can go to the one, yeah. to the side. And I like the, the pen, peninsula because you get like twice as much viewing angle, so. Yeah, you sure do. More cleaning too. <laughs> I know, I know. Do you ever make it to Florida? I've been to Miami a couple of times. But you got to make it a point. Maybe next year for Reef of Palooza, take a plane out there, you guys together, you I and know. David. I'd love to show you guys the facility. It's very impressive. I'm seriously. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I've seen them on video, and it looks pretty amazing. So, Well, Eric, thank you for letting us in your house. I'm very, very impressed with your system, especially your fish collection. I can tell you're going places, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming, guys. Thanks, Matt. All right.